In this video, we'll be discussing amphiprotic substances. Here are our syllabus dot points. As we briefly discussed in the acid-based models video, an amphiprotic substance is one that has the ability to act as both an acid or a base. An example of an amphiprotic species is the hydrogen carbonate ion, HCO3-. If we look in the top equation, we can see that this is acting as an acid because it donates its proton to the hydroxide ion to form the carbonate ion and water. In the bottom equation, it accepts a proton from the hydronium ion to reform carbonic acid and water. The hydrogen carbonate will act as an acid when it's reacted with a stronger base. So if we look at this example on the bottom, we can see that the Kb of NH3 is higher than the Kb of HCO3-. Because NH3 has a higher Kb, it means that it is a stronger base. And so when we look at the reaction between the hydrogen carbonate ion and ammonia, we see that actually what happens is this will act as an acid to form an ammonium ion and the carbonate anion. Similarly, when reacted with a stronger acid, the hydrogen carbonate will act as a base. The stronger an acid, the larger the Ka. If we look at the Ka of HCO3, it's 4.8 times 10 to the minus 11, which is smaller than that of acetic acid, which is 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. And thus, acetic acid is a stronger acid than hydrogen carbonate. Thus, when we look at the reaction between these two species, the one that will act as an acid is going to be acetic acid, which would donate its proton to form the carbonic acid and the acetate ion. Amphiprotic salts are ionic substances which dissociate in water to form an amphiprotic substance. So examples of amphiprotic salts are NaHCO3, which forms the hydrogen carbonate ion, Na2HPO4, which forms the hydrogen phosphate ion, and NaH2PO4, which forms the dihydrogen phosphate ion. Now the pH of a solution which contains the amphiprotic salt would depend on the Ka and Kb of each of the amphiprotic species. If we look at HCO3- hydrogen carbonate, which is formed from the dissociation of the ionic salt NaHCO3, we can see that the Ka value, 5 times 10 to the minus 11, is less than the Kb value, 2 times 10 to the minus 8. As a result, we know that there is a greater tendency for this to act as a bronsidlary base to accept protons than to act as a bronsidlary acid. Now in water, both of these equations are occurring simultaneously. However, because it's more likely to accept the protons, what we'll see is that the solution of HCO3 is actually going to be slightly basic, meaning the pH will be greater than 7 at 25 degrees. We previously looked at how water had the ability to act as both an acid and a base, as per the Bronsted-Lowry theory. The amphiprotic nature of water can also be demonstrated by its self-ionization equation. Here we have water, which donates its proton to itself to form the hydronium ion and also hydroxide ion. The solution of water, however, remains neutral as the ratio of hydroxide ions to hydronium ions is equal. It's important to know that the equilibrium constant Kw for water is 1 times 10 to the minus 14 at 25 degrees Celsius and standard conditions. The self-ionization of water is an endothermic reaction, meaning that the delta H of this reaction is going to be greater than zero. This means that more energy is absorbed to break bonds than that which was released when the bonds were formed. According to Le Chatelier's principle, when we add energy to this, the equilibrium will shift to the right-hand side. Thus, if we increase the temperature, we're going to be shifting this to the right, and we're going to be increasing the H3O plus concentration and the OH minus concentration. If we remember, Kw is calculated by multiplying the concentration of H3O plus and OH minus. Thus, the Kw value is going to increase as we increase the temperature. This means that neutral pH is going to decrease with an increase in temperature. However, it's important to recognize that a decrease in neutral pH does not mean that it's more acidic, as the acidity of the substance is still dependent on the relative concentrations of hydrogen and hydroxide ions. If we remember, the Kw of water is 10 to the minus 14. This is a relatively small number. And so the contribution of the self-ionization of water to create H3O plus and OH minus is negligible in an acid or a base solution.